Saturday Playhouse, Chocky by John Wyndham, dramatised for radio by John Constable. Where is Earth? Yes, but where is the sun? Where? X, 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 X. What is X? Why? No, no, no. Yes, yes. Why not? No, 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 no. Yes. But why? Why? I don't know why! Chalky by John Wyndham. Dramatised by John Constable. Anything you want is just the way things are. Well, the time the world takes to turn round is a day. And that's 24 hours, then. Daddy? I don't see why 32 hours is more sensible. Nothing. I'm just... Anyway, 24 hours do make a day. Everyone knows that. He's at it again. In seven days what do you mean, again? He just stands there why. talking to himself and staring into space like a zombie. He's mad. Don't ever let me hear you, me hear you say that again. A week just is seven days. I expect he's on the phone to Colin. No, he's not. Look. Polly, no. Do you know it's never? Thought I told you to knock before you come barging in. Oh, hi, Dad. What? Nothing. We just uh, wondered who you were talking to, that's all. No one. Oh. How's it going? Getting there. Darling, have you noticed anything odd about Matthew lately? Well, I, I don't exactly mean odd. You know, anything unusual. Oh, so you have, have you? It didn't seem worth bothering about. I mean, all children talk to themselves at times. I'm afraid I didn't pay much attention. I didn't want to do anything that might encourage another piff. Well, don't even think about that. Well, anyway, Polly was only... What was she, five? Hmm. No, a piff can provide useful bossing material for a little girl. But for a twelve-year-old boy to... I hope you're right. One piff was more than enough. Now, this is different. I mean, Piff used to spend most of her time being bossed about by Polly and having to take it. Yeah. This invisible friend seemed to be criticising and coming back with opinions of its own. What do you mean? Well, I don't see... it was as if Matthew was being argued with or, well, arguing with himself. He must have been arguing with what someone's told him at school. One of his teachers, most likely. Honestly, some of the questions he's been asking lately. Lately? Was there ever a time when he didn't? Oh, I know. But there's a new kind with a different slant. Such as? Well, the other day, he asked me why there are two sexes. Well, that's a difficult one, you know, on the spur of the moment. Well, it's difficult anyway, isn't it? Well, now you're coming to mention it, yeah. <laughs> but I didn't mention it. Matthew did. Well, of course, it, it, it helps to spread the load. And there was another one, too, about where is Earth? Would you believe it? Where is Earth? In relation to what? Oh, yes, he knows it goes round the sun. But where, please, is the sun? <laughs> well, I suppose that's why we send them to school. Broaden their horizons. Anyway, we don't want to make heavy weather out of this. It's probably just a passing phase. Mm. Why does a cow stop? Why? Why? What stops? What stops happening? What makes it stop? No, I can't tell you now. No. No, Chucky. Not now, I want to sleep. Shall I call the doctor? Oh, sure, it's nothing to, to worry away. about. Just a fluey germ he's picked up from school. Stop it, Chucky. He's running a high Don't temperature. Doesn't seem to know whether he's talking to me or... Don't shut up and go away. It's all right, darling. Mummy's here. Mum, tell Chucky to go away. She doesn't understand. She won't leave me alone. Here, darling. Have a little drink. There. Now lie down, darling, and try to go to sleep. Asleep? Chucky won't let me. He will keep talking. Please make him shut up. There now. You'll feel better when you wake up. But do tell him, Mum. He won't listen to me. 
Time to go away now. Chucky, you really must let Matthew be quiet and rest. He isn't at all well, Chucky, and he needs to go to sleep. So please go away and leave him alone now. Perhaps if he's better tomorrow, you can come back then. See, you've got to clear out Chucky. Yes, he's gone. Good. Now you can settle down. Good night, darling. Well, what are we supposed to make of that? Aren't they astonishing? Oh dear! It does very much look as if this family has landed with another piff. Oh, let's hope this one doesn't start occupying invisible chairs, feeling sick in tea shops.、Mm. What's odd is, did you notice? He doesn't seem clear in his own mind whether this Chalky is a him or a her. Children are usually very positive about that. They feel it's important. I wouldn't say the feeling of importance is entirely restricted to children, but you're right. It is odd. The whole thing is odd. Dad, why is it a cow stops? Why does it stop? What? Well, it seems to get a bit of the way, and then it just seems to stop. I mean, it doesn't want to stay in the field, so why doesn't it just? Open the gate. Well, but, but they don't know how to. What I mean is, when the farmer opens the gate, the cow knows it's time for milking and which stall to go to. And then about coming back to the field. But then, what you mean is they just stop understanding. Yeah, but why? I mean, if they've got brains enough to remember all that, why can't they remember how to open the gate? What is it that doesn't go on happening in the heads that makes them stop? Look, now you've gone and scared the poor thing. Not now, Tom. No, shut up. Dad, do you know what five X's mean? X X X X X. I can't say I do. Look, is this something to do with someone called Chalky? You know, when you were poorly, you were rambling on a bit. You know, delirious. Sounded as if this chalky character was pestering you with questions. It's all right if you don't want to talk about it. It's all right, Dad. Chalky says it's all right to tell you about him. Only she doesn't want to worry Mum. Oh, I see. Yes. So, who exactly is this chalky? I'm not exactly sure. I know he comes from somewhere far away, another universe. I don't even know what she looks like. She's just this voice talking and asking me questions. Look. I get a bit confused with all this he and she business. It'd be easier if I knew which Chucky is. I thought so too, but Chucky doesn't seem to know. Oh, that's a bit unusual. I mean, it's one of those things that people are generally pretty sure about. Chucky's sort of different. I explained about him's and hers, but he didn't seem to get it. Said it sounded like a pretty silly arrangement and wanted to know why it's like that. I couldn't tell her. Do you know why, Dad? Well, but, 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 but not exactly. Why? No, it's just—it's just how it is. It's one of nature's ways of managing things. <sighs> Chucky keeps finding lots of things to me. She thinks animals are just a who. Sometimes she sounds like Colin's bossy sister. You know. It does sound as if Chucky inclines more to the female of the species. What do you say we call her a she, if only for the sake of grammar? <laughs> Chucky's hopeless at grammar. She can't seem to get the grips with tenses and plurals. I do wish we knew more about his parents. In Polly, I can see bits of you and me.、It、gives me something to go on. But with Matthew, there's no guide at all. Oh God! You don't think it could be drugs? <laughs> In Oswald Street. Look, nobody's saying there's anything wrong with him. I mean, apart from the fact that he hears voices. Chucky. What sort of a name is that? Sounds like some. Voodoo doll in a video nasty. She named herself apparently. Matthew seems to think she's. She. Yes, we sort of decided it would be easier if. You decided she was feminine, so you could gang up on her. Now, don't be ridiculous. Why does a car crash? 
Why? Danger. Danger. Dirty. Clumsy. Ugly. Stupid. 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 It's not stupid. It's not stupid. No, it's not. It's a brand new. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. That's all. It's all right. Come on. Yeah. Take it easy, son. Let's get away from all these spectators, shall we? Sorry, Dad. That's all right, old son. You take your time. All right now, I think. Good. But dear, oh dear, what was all that about? The car. The car? What's it done to you? No, I think it, I think it's great. That's why I wanted to show. Oh, I see. And Chucky wasn't interested. She said it was stupid and ugly, and she she laughed at it. Oh, what did you find so amusing about it? Pretty much everything. She said it was dirty and wasteful and dangerous. And why does the engine have to guzzle petrol? I didn't know. So I said that's how cars are. Hello. Anyway, and ours was brand new. The latest model. And she said nobody with any sense would ride in so, something so clumsy and dangerous. What was so great about wheels? When you can have cars that fly through the air and don't have to cough up poison and never crash into each other. There's a lot to be said for that, if you can manage it. Anyway, I don't care what she thinks. I like our new car. Tell me, Matthew, where does Chucky come from? It's one of the things we can't find out. It's too difficult. You see, if you didn't know where anything else is, how can you find out where you are? Like, no reference points. I expect that's it. But we think where Chucky lives must be a very, very long way away. Bye. Everything in yes, her world bye. seems so... Damn. When Janet makes her mind up, she just scatters my wits. Why on earth didn't I put her off? Oh, well. What's going on? Nothing. Nothing. So when's she coming? Sunday. Mm. Matthew, come and feed the swans. Coming. You know, this Chalky affair seems to be getting more baffling by the moment. On the face of it, it's as if some sort of space invader has taken up residence in Matthew's brain. <laughs> I know it sounds ridiculous, but... Oh, I can't see it's doing him much harm. Well, quite the reverse. Well, I have to admit, his interests do seem to have widened. He's even starting to take on an air of responsibility. Mm. Now, it just seems to me there's something downright screwy about a child attributing his discoveries to some sort of familiar. Mm. What does Mary make of it? Well, she frets, of course. It doesn't help that Matthew was adopted. Oh, I'm not going to blame me. Well, for advising us to adopt, good Lord, no. At the time, it was the best thing that could have happened to Mary. And then, of course, within a year, she was pregnant with Polly. I seem to recall Matthew was none too pleased. I think he was rather hoping for a baby lamb. <laughs> hey, careful! Ah, uh, the thing is, we can't help feeling we must be somehow responsible. Something in Matthew's childhood. Oh, it's only natural. Then again, all this fussing over him. That's why I was wondering if you knew of anyone who might be able to advise. Mm. You remember that chap Landis we met at the Rotary Club, do? Bit of a beardy weirdy. Of course, it's none of my business, but, well, one can't be too watchful. Doesn't it strike you as being a bit introverted? I don't think so. Ah, oh, well, that's what I mean about the outside eye. He does to me. And my Tim says he talks to himself. A lot of children think out loud. Of course. But according to Tim, he does say some rather odd things. There is such a thing as a child having too much imagination, you know. What kind of odd things? Well, Tim doesn't remember exactly. But they seem to him, well, distinctly odd. And let's face it, your Tim is unmistakably the healthy extrovert type. Men stutter in corpore sano and all that. Exactly. Which, of course, makes one aware of the difference between them. Oh, it's bound to. I mean, your Tim is so splendidly normal. It's hard to imagine him saying anything odd. Though I, I do think it's a pity that normality is scarcely achievable except at some cost to individuality. Still, there it is. That's what normal means. Average. 
Oh, I wouldn't call Tim average, exactly. Why, only the other day, he was asking me whether he thought... Thanks for heading her off. Though you were a bit hard on her, Tim. He's not that dull. Well, of course he's not. But your sister, my dear, is an interfering, and I'm afraid, <laughs> not very intelligent... David! Like all parents, what she really wants is a child genius who's perfectly normal. She's right about one thing. We don't know anything about Matthew's heredity. And we certainly don't know that heredity has anything to do with it. I spoke to Dr. Icott. Well, you didn't take Matthew, did you? I decided not to. I was afraid he might see it as a breach of confidence. Well, yeah. I have nothing against Icott as a pill pusher and a measles spotter. But I don't think this is up his street. You're right, it isn't. I tried to explain to the old fool that I wasn't asking for an opinion. All I wanted was a recommendation to a suitable specialist. From which I gather that what you got was an opinion. Oh, yes. All Matthew needs is plenty of cold baths and exercise and the window open at night. Oh, please. David, we must help him somehow. What about this chap, Landis? Alan mentioned. He specialises in mental disorders. And he's got a job at the Claudesley, so you must be some good at it. If he was willing to come up and take a look at Matthew, he might even be able to take it on himself. Nothing can travel faster than the speed of... <laughs> oh, here we go again. Castle Brain 5X? <laughs> well, young girl, what do you know that Einstein didn't? Doesn't matter, sir. Oh, but it does. Any challenge to Einstein is most important. <laughs> uh, perhaps you can tell us what travels faster. Thought, sir. <laughs> uh, thought, gore, is a physical process. It involves neural messages, synapses, chemical changes to the cells. You will find it is considerably slower than the speed of light. If not, a great many road accidents could be avoided. Yeah. But, but what, gore? Well, sir, perhaps, I mean, if you can sort of throw, throw your mind. Sort of throw? Would project be the word? Yes, sir. If you can project your mind, space and time sort of don't count. You can go through them at once. Oh, I see. A most interesting proposition. Uh, perhaps you yourself can perform this feat. <laughs> no, sir, I... But you know a man who can. <laughs> well, perhaps you could bring him along some time. I'm sure we'll find it most instructive. Well, having established that nothing in the universe, with the possible exception of Matthew Gore's brain, <laughs> can exceed the speed of light. Matthew, this is Mr. Landis, the friend of mine I was telling you about. Roy, pleased to meet you, Matthew. Are you a head shrinker? <laughs> Holly, I don't know where she picks up. Uh, no, I'm just someone with an interest in Matthew's friend, Chocky. I have a feeling I may have run across someone a bit like her. Someone who talks to you in the same way? Not to me personally, but to someone. Well, quite a few people, actually. Why don't we leave you two to have your talk? Come on, Polly. Oh, Mum! From what David told me, I was rather expecting an imaginative child who'd been reading too much science fiction. And what do you think it is now? Well, Chucky exists, all right. But where Chucky exists, or how, and what she is, beats me. <laughs> and it beats Matthew, too. I can understand that for him she exists... That's why we've been playing along. Oh, and Chucky has a much more definite existence than that. Whatever she is, she's more than his own invention. His conscious invention, yes. But could she not be some sort of complex? Well, naturally, I looked for some personification of his subconscious, but I don't understand it at all. I know what it looks like, but that's sheer nonsense. Oh, please. What does it look like? More than anything I've ever come across, it looks like a case of what our unscientific ancestors used to call possession. They would have said that this Chalky is a wandering, if not wanton, spirit that has invaded Matthew. But that being, as you said, sheer nonsense. We must be careful not to be as dogmatic in our way as our ancestors were in theirs. When Matthew says he talks or listens to Chalky, he may be speaking metaphorically, but the conversations are quite real. You'll have to explain that. 
Well, for instance, he, he was trying to explain why Chucky thinks our space rockets even funnier and more old-fashioned than your car, and how the... How did space rockets get into this? It had to do with the speed of light being too slow to allow one to cover the vast interstellar distances involved. Uh, apparently, Chucky keeps going on about something she calls XXXXX. But there, Matthew seems to lose her among ideas that are beyond his grasp. As he puts it, it won't turn into proper words. He is only twelve. Well, exactly. In fact, he has an exceptionally good vocabulary for a child his age. The point is, if he were simply passing on questions he's heard, he wouldn't have that difficulty. So how do these questions get into his head without the words to formulate them? This is all rather academic. No, on the contrary, it's at the very root of the... Look, according to Chalky... Our civilization is still suffering from a primitive fixation on the wheel. Now, where would a 12-year-old pick up an idea like that? Very well. Suppose we agree that subconscious promptings are to be ruled out. What's to be done about it? I don't know. I literally do not know what's got into him. I wish I did. Something has... So what it amounts to is that all you have to tell us is that you can't see any way of helping Matthew. Helping him? I, I'm not even sure he needs help. He doesn't particularly like this Chockey. In fact, she frequently irritates him. But she does provide him with... No, you're talking as if this Chockey really exists. Let's get this straight. Chockey is simply a name for an imaginary companion like Polly's Piff. I, I'm afraid I can't have made myself clear. Piff was a child's invention... Chalky is, in some way I don't understand, objective. She comes from without, not from within. Perhaps I shouldn't have used the word possession. It isn't domination, it's more like a working arrangement. What on earth do you mean by that? Matthew has taught Chalky to only visit him at certain prearranged times when he can give her his full attention. I don't understand this. One doesn't have to be a psychologist to see the danger of a fantasy getting mixed up with reality. I agreed to David asking you because I thought you might be able to suggest how we could rid Matthew of his fantasy without harming him. Instead, you seem to have spent the day encouraging him in it and to have become infected with it yourself. You're sad. You spend all your time talking to this chalky person. Show me, stupid idiot. You don't know you're what you're talking stupid. about. That's why no one wants to be friends with you, because everyone knows you're mad. You're the one who's mad. Even Colin thinks you're mad. Shut up! Shut up, the both of you! <laughs> and what have you got to cry about? You started it again, as usual. <laughs> Darling, Daddy doesn't mean it, but you really must try not to quarrel with Matthew, especially at meal times. Matthew doesn't want to quarrel with you, and I know you hate it too, really. So do try. It's so much nicer for everyone if you don't. But I do try, Mummy, only I can't help it. Well, you'll have to just try a little harder, won't you? <sighs> I'm sorry about that. But honestly, we haven't had a meal in the last two weeks without this infernal bickering. And it's always Polly who starts it. I, I don't know what's come over her. They used to get on so well. She's jealous. Jealous? Of what? I'd have thought that was obvious. But that's ridiculous. Chucky isn't real. She doesn't even exist. She's real enough to Matthew. And you two haven't helped by deciding she's a she. Polly's always been his confidant. Now this Chucky has replaced her. She feels left out. And I'm not surprised she's jealous. It's getting beyond a game of make-believe and... Good evening, Mr. Gore. Uh, I don't expect you remember me. Stephen Kaffer. I take your Matthew for maths and physics. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, please, come in. Yeah. Good evening, Mr. Kaffer. Matthew's just upstairs doing his homework. Shall I call him? Oh, uh, no, Mrs. Gore. In fact, I'd rather you didn't. It's really you I wanted to see. About Matthew, of course. Oh. Please come in. True. Yeah. yeah. Well, now, what seems to be the trouble? Oh, no trouble. Well, nothing like that. I hope you don't mind me calling on you like this. It's quite unofficial. To be honest, I'm puzzled. Oh, thank you. I presume you're the mathematician of the family. 
Well, I'm just an accountant, more arithmetic, not... Then it must be you, Mrs. Gore. Me? Well, I do talk to Matthew about computers. I design websites, but no maths, not even arithmetic. Well, someone has been helping. Not that I mind that, but... Well, frankly, I think it's too much for him to grasp at the moment. Yeah? I thought you were supposed to be doing your homework. I've done it. What? What have you been doing to poor Mr. Kaffer? Nothing. He gets annoyed when I ask questions, so now I don't ask. He wants to know who's been teaching you the binary code. For what? What's this, Matthew? Uh, 179. Wouldn't it be simpler to write it in the ordinary way? That's the way I have to use with Chalky, because that's how she counts. She thinks it's silly to bother with ten different numbers just because you've got ten fingers. And all you really need is two fingers. You mean Chalky counts in Y's and N's? Yeses and no's. Look. Yes, yes. No, no. Yes, yes. No, yes. See, each one is double the one in its right. So if you start on the right and add the yeses together, it comes to... 179. I see. Mr. Kaffer also took the liberty of delivering your school report in person. Oh. Seems he's not the only one who's a bit perplexed. Your music teacher can't seem to decide if you're young Mozart or simply tone deaf. She says some crap at music. I'm sure Miss Soames doesn't use language like that. Then there's Miss Blade. Biology. She seems a bit sniffy too. Oh. She was going on about some plants have only one sex. And I said, so do some people. And she said, nonsense. And I said, it wasn't, because I knew someone like that. And she said, what did I mean? In that tone of voice. And then I shut up, because I couldn't tell her about Chucky ever since. She gets giving me these funny looks. That's all. Does Chucky ever talk about her mother and father? Yeah, but the hymns and hers get mixed up as if they were both the same. She thinks it must be terribly confusing to have two parents and not a good idea. Why is that? She says it's easy to love one person, but if your parent is divided in two, you only upset yourself trying not to love one more than the other. She thinks that's why we're all so unhappy. Dad. You don't think I'm mad, do you? Good heavens, no. Pay no attention to Polly. It was Colin. You haven't told him about Chucky, have you? No. I haven't told anyone except you and Mum and Polly. Good. If I were you, I'd keep it that way. I only asked him if he knew anyone who could hear someone talking sort of inside himself. And Colin said that hearing voices was the first sign of madness. And that people who do hear them get locked up or, or burnt at the stake. <sighs> So I wondered. Of that, you must have been thinking of the kind of voices that make people do stupid things and get them muddled over what's right and what's wrong. That's a different kind of voices from the ones that ask questions and tell you about the binary code and so on. Quite different. It probably only heard of the other kind. Didn't know what you meant. Good. You see, I don't feel at all mad. No. No need to worry about that. No need at all. shouldn't be doing this. I know, but... David, what is it? What does it mean? 
You don't think this chalky could be some sort of computer virus? You can't catch a computer virus. Well, perhaps we shouldn't read too much into it. Either. All the kids are messing around with the sampling. Oh, hello, Matthew. I thought you were at. Uh... Mum was just tidying your room. You'd left the computer on. We didn't mean to. We were just curious. Did you do that? Yes. I didn't know Miss Soames had got you composing. It's not for Miss Soames. It's private. You seem to be hearing things in quite a different way. I expect it's something to do with growing up. It's all right, Matthew. We were only wondering who really did it. I did. I mean, sort of. Well, I did do it. It doesn't matter a bit, darling. I think it's very good, though it's rather strange. I did do it, Mum. Really, I did. Why it sounds sort of funny is because that's how Chucky hears things. Tell us about it, darling. It happened one day after music. Miss Soames said that what I'd done was crap, hopeless. Chucky said it was because I, I didn't know how to listen properly. So I said I didn't see where properly came into it. You either hear things or you don't. And she said no, because you can listen to things without hearing them. And what about trying an experiment with me composing and her listening? Matthew, does Chucky speak to you through the computer? No. Well. I mean, she doesn't need the computer to speak to me. But you see, the way Chucky thinks, it's somewhere between words and music. She has trouble finding the right words. Yeah. So I thought if I sample all the words I could think of, and lots of musical notes. That was your voice. It didn't sound at all like it. It's sample, Mum. Anyway, we still haven't cracked the words. Even the music didn't come off at first, because I couldn't empty my head. But the more we did it, the easier it got. So now all I have to do is toggle the mouse and we'll sort of switch off me and the music comes. Only the way it comes is the way Chucky hears it, not the way I do. I think I understand, Matthew. You sort of hand over to Chucky. But I should think that feels a bit funny, doesn't it? At first. But then it gets more like, like riding, like riding a bicycle. No hands. And you're not quite because it's Chucky doing the steering, not me. It's sort of hard to explain. I suppose it doesn't ever happen when you don't want it to. By accident, I mean. Oh, no. I have to make it happen by thinking of nothing. Yes, dear, we understand that, but... But do you think it's a good thing to do? I think so, Mum. It's much better than the music I do on my own. That wasn't quite what I... It's getting late. That's right, it is. By the way, Matthew, have you shown these to anyone else? No. Well, not really shown. Miss Soames came in when I was messing around on the sequencer and asked me whose music it was. I couldn't pretend it was anyone else's. So I had to say it was mine. She gave me a funny look, you know, and said did I mind if she had a copy. I couldn't very well say no, so... Yeah. Come on then, young Mozart. Time for bed. Good night, darling. Oh, David... He was such a lovely little boy. Darling, I'm sure you've got it all wrong. I mean, it is not. He was pretty emphatic that he's the one who decides when and whether it happens at all. Naturally, he'd think that. <sighs> Worth a climb, eh? Oh, you can see for miles. Hmm. Look at it, all silver with frost. And that sky, so red. Mm, careful, not too near the edge. Is that Clanny Munnock down there? What do you mean, Clanny Munnock? <laughs> Clanny Munnock. <laughs> I'll, get, I'll get there in the end. Well, we've only lived here 13 years, haven't we? <laughs> it's good to hear you laugh again. Oh, it was good of Sue to have the kids. I just needed a break from them. Not to mention you-know-who. <laughs> Yes, it's getting a bit chilly. What do you say we head down for a swift one in Lanny Monkey? <laughs> <laughs> no. Come on, Colin. Don't be scared. It's frozen solid. Look. Be careful! Auntie Sue said we weren't to go on the ice. It's all right. Must be at least a foot thick. I saw this man ride his motorbike across it, right over to the other side. Look, you can see ice in it. Is there really a swan's nest on the island? I'll show you, but we'll just have to watch out for the... 
Nothing, nothing, must, help, 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 Polly. <sighs> we have just seen a sunset to um, die for. What is it? What happened? No, not... Look, it's all right, Mary, they're safe. Matthew's upstairs in bed. Sue's taken Polly to the hospital. It's a nasty cut on her arm, but look, it's nothing serious. What happened? They fell in the mirror, but they're all right. They're all right. It's a near thing, though. It hasn't been for Matthew. Cheers. So what happened? Sue specifically told them not to go on the ice, but... Our Colin says Matthew decided to walk over to the island, and Polly followed him. He reckons they must have been uh, at least 30 yards out when the ice cracked. Polly went straight into the water. Matthew tried to pull her out, but, well, you know, our ice can suddenly... Uh, a huge chunk broke up, just like that. The other two were thrashing about in the water, and, and Colin thought they were done for. But then he saw Matthew striking out for Polly. Held her up for more than a minute, Colin reckons, in that freezing water. Somehow, he managed to drag her out onto the ice. Yeah. Anyway, it came out all right, thank God. But if it hadn't been for Matthew... Hi, Dad. How are you feeling? All right. Andy Steve made me a hot bath. I've been hearing great things about you, Matthew. It's not true. No? Must say I was a bit taken aback. I... I never knew you could swim. I can't. It was choking. What happened? She was sort of faced. Like Mr. Kaffer, only more so. I was so surprised. I stopped panicking. She told me to think of nothing. And I don't know how, but somehow she showed my arms and legs how to swim. You see, it was really her, not me. I see. So, so once you found out you could swim, you looked for a way back onto the ice. No, it was Polly. Yes, there was Polly, too. Yes, that does rather seem to be the point. It was Chucky, did it? Hmm. I believe that Matthew believes it. And how else can one explain it? The day before he couldn't swim a stroke. And this thing of getting out of the way and letting Chucky do it. He's been doing it to compose his music. Yeah, this is what it seems to be. It opens up a whole new phase of this Chucky business. That's what we thought. And poor Mary's not at all happy with it. She's afraid for him. I don't see why. After all, whether Chalky exists or not, it's only because Matthew believes she does that you're two are alive today. Don't she see that? Oh, I don't know. Why do people find it easier to believe in evil spirits than in... Hello? Who's Matthew talking to? Hello. Hello. I don't think we've met. Mike Evans, sir. My dad used to run the leisure centre. I was just asking Matthew about his exploit. Quite a local hero, you know, after yesterday. Maybe, but he still has to eat. Come on, Matthew. Bye, Matthew. Bye. Who was that? Just a man. He wanted to know how Polly was. He said he's got a little girl like her, so he's interested. Most astounding of all, Matthew didn't know how to swim. The water was icy cold and I was terrified, he admitted. But then I heard a voice telling me to keep calm and how to move my arms and legs. And so I did and found that I could swim. That's Mike Evans, the man I saw talking to Matthew. He must work for the local rag. Matthew believes that the voice which he often hears speaking to him... Oh, why didn't is I... ...is the voice of his guardian angel. Shall I go and sort it out well, now? You'll be fast asleep by now. Besides, what's the point? What's done is done. Well, it's only a local paper... Christianity and has survived to this day in our folklore and seasonal rituals. This new archaeological find establishes a clear link with an Anglo-Saxon mother goddess. Now, 
from the influence of the ancient Angles to the incidence of a modern angel. Twelve-year-old Matthew Gore from Oswestry, Shropshire, is hardly oh. to isolate to say this sister from the funny thing is, Matthew can't swim. Denise Clatterbuck spoke to our reluctant hero. Oh. Matthew, is it true that you'd never swum before? Yeah. I mean, no. You'd never swum before? No. I tried, but it wouldn't happen. But this time it did. Oh, no. You heard a voice telling you what to do? Well, sort of. And you think this must have been the voice of your guardian angel? No. That's a load of crap. Rubbish. But you told the local reporter oh, that... bloody Mike Evans. He said it, and I didn't know he was a reporter anyway. But you did hear a voice. Sort of. But now, don't you think it could have been your guardian angel telling you how to swim? I never said anything about his guardian angel. It was him. All that happened was I tried... I just found I could swim. Swimming in one easy lesson. Well, whether or not there was a guardian angel involved, congratulations to Matthew on the way he put the lesson to use. Now sports and news of Manchester United's thrilling 3-2 victory last night. I've just been listening to you on the radio. Oh. How did it happen? A woman phoned up when you and Mum were out. She said she was from the local radio and could she come round and see me? And well, it seemed rude to say no to So she came round and showed me a bit about me in some local paper. Then she turned on a recorder and asked me some questions. I didn't think it would be interesting enough to get broadcasted honest, Dad. Mm. Can't be helped now. But if there are any more would-be interviewers, I think you'd better refer them to me. Will you do that? I'll try. But I didn't know that Mum was a reporter and with the radio lady. Well, it didn't seem like an interview exactly. Perhaps the simplest thing would be to treat any stranger as a suspected interviewer. We don't want them getting onto Chalky, do we? Mm-hmm. Where's your guardian yeah. angel laying now, eh, hey, It's not true. I never said anything yeah, about guardian angel. Yeah. Save you from me! Oh. Oh. <laughs> look, look at him. He's eyes. He's eyes. Oh. Oh. You all right, boy? Yes, sir. I think so. Let's have a look. Oh, you're going to have a bit of a shine, eh? So it all from the staff room. That's Simon Leder and his gang. Whatever did you do to scare them off like that? No, sir. I just stood up and looked at them. Looked at them? Well, you must have looked pretty fierce. Perhaps you threw your mind at them, eh? No, sir. Can you see out of it? I'm all right. Did Chucky do it? Now then, break it up, you two. Oh, not again. Hello? David? Oh, look. Roy, it's not a good time. Yes, I heard on the radio. Sounds like our Chockey's coming into her own. Yes, the press are onto it. Phone's been ringing all day. Well, I've been giving it a lot of thought. And I reckon Saw's your man, Sir William Saw, up in Manchester. He's had some quite remarkable successes. If anyone can help, it's Saw. I seem to recall you were doubtful whether Matthew needed help. Well, still am. But your wife does, you know. And you yourself could do with some definite assurance, couldn't you? I could have a word with him. I'm pretty sure he'd be keen to see Matthew. I'll have to talk it through with Mary. The Home Office was not available for comment. You're listening to Newsday. The time, 23 minutes past eight. And would you believe it? Young Matthew Gore is in the news again. Oh. I never talked to anyone. Minutes of fame on last Wednesday's Newsday. Well, get an earful of this. <laughs> Yeah. I never gave it the more to start. I believe you. It's green. One, two. Elks. 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 What is X by 12 year old Matthew Gore, which has just scooped first prize in the new millennial? <gasps> what? Matthew! That music teacher. Well, X might the be, same. Here on the Newsday program, we don't know our bass and drums from our trip hops. We're assured that judges are not swayed by the final. It's outrageous. I don't know what these teachers are coming to. 
How they expect children to learn any manners when they're taught by people like... I want you to write to the headmaster, telling him what we think of her and demanding an apology. She won't apologize. Why should she? One of her pupils composed something she thought was good enough to enter in this competition. What right has she to send it in without consulting us? Naturally, she thought we'd be delighted, and so we should, if it weren't for this chalky business. She didn't even ask, Matthew. I wouldn't mind betting that right now she's expecting us to call her and say thank you. <gasps> Go ahead, write your letter. You won't get an apology. What are you going to do then? Make a row? Go to the press, tell them exactly why you didn't want anyone to hear your son's music. How long will it take before Chalky's right out of the bag? No, Mary, I'm sorry. Darling, don't. Why? Why us? I don't know. Oh, darling, don't cry. I'm so afraid for him. <laughs> Tell me honestly. They won't think he's mad, will they? Of course not. How could they? You couldn't find a saner boy than Matthew. But if they find out about Chucky, that he hears her talking to him, I mean hearing voices. Darling, I... darling, please, please get it into your head. There is nothing wrong with Matthew. I just want him to be normally normal, not plus or minus anything. Look, whatever Chucky is, I think we'd be wrong to regard her as a threat. She seems inquisitive and intrusive, but basically well disposed, essentially a benign kind of presence. Oh, I see. Now you're telling me it really is a guardian angel. No. Well, I suppose in a way, yes. You know, David, with all this hoo-ha, Chucky's right in the wings. Should be taking a call any moment now. What are you going to do, Betty? About it? What can I do except try to deal with things as they crop up? About Matthew, though. Landis has come up with a recommendation. Mm -hmm. Sir William Thorpe. Thorpe. Thorpe with a handle. Yeah, I know. Recently got appointed as some sort of um, advisory industrial psychologist on some whacking great retainer. On top of a thumping good practice. Oh, a thumping good fees? It won't be cheap. I'll work with Landis before you commit yourself. I don't know. It's not as if this chalky has done him any harm. Mm. She has, in fact, saved Polly's lives. It's Mary I worry about. She won't be happy until Chucky has been driven out. Abolished. Exorcised. Mm. Then you'll have to pin your faith on Thorpe. Mm. The report, the Sunday voice. The psychic observer, for heaven's sake. The phone hasn't stopped. And some dotty old clergyman eager to explain that a guardian angel was a pagan concept and asking me to show Matthew the error of his ways. Oh, and then Janet rang up. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Thrilled to hear we've got a composer in the family, though she couldn't help feeling his music was a bit... What was it? Disturbed. And wants to come over tomorrow to dissect him? Well, Sunday, actually. I hope you put her off. Well, you know how insistent she is. Oh, well. No, wait a minute. I'm damned if we're going to sit here listening to your sister taking him apart in some gloating orgy of, you know the line she'll take, gushing, inquisitive, phony commiseration for her poor sister who would have the misfortune to have a peculiar child if anyone did. <sighs> I'll do it. Janet? Hello. Look, I'm sorry. David has already fixed up for us to spend the weekend with Alan and Sue. Yes. Sorry. I should have checked with him first. Next weekend. No. Um, uh, no, I'm afraid we're busy. Look, I'll give you a call when things settle down a bit. No, no, he's fine. All right, Janet. Yes, I'm sorry too. Bye. Thanks, David. Hello? Who is it? Sunday dawn. No, I'm sorry, you can't. No, I'm his mother. He's gone to bed. No, he'll be out all day tomorrow. Goodbye. That settles it. We have to go out tomorrow. And we'll have to start early before they start camping in the front garden. 
Tell you what, we'll stay away overnight. Oh, leave the thing. I hope they don't break in while we're away. I feel like a refugee. It's all Matthew's fault. It isn't. I don't want any of it to happen. It just happened. Then it's all Chucky's fault. You ought to be grateful to Chucky. I know, but I'm not. She spoils everything. We used to have to put up with Piff. She was a bit of a nuisance. Piff was just a silly. She didn't tell me things. I had to tell her. I bet Chucky's telling Matthew things now and asking him her stupid questions. As a matter of fact, she's not. We have been here since Tuesday. I think she's gone home. Where's her home? I don't know. She's a bit worried. I think she's gone home to ask about things. What sort of thing? Well, if she's not here, let's all forget about her for a bit. Good. I shall read my book. What's that supposed to be? A circus? It's a very interesting story about a pony called Twinkle Hooves. He was in a circus three books ago. Now he wants to be a ballet dancer. Oh. I don't care if he can swim. He's not swimming in that. This used to be such a lovely beach. Now it's... Just the edge of Cloaca Britannica. Let's go somewhere else. Matthew, come on. You two go on ahead. I'll wait for him. Why can't we all go together? Come on, Polly. Chucky's back, isn't she? How did you know? It's getting so I can read the signs. Look, do me a favour. Don't tell Mum. She'll only worry. We don't want to spoil her day any more than this place has already. OK. Dad. I think Chucky's got a problem. How do you mean? I don't know. She keeps going on about danger and how nobody must know she's in me. And then she gets, seems to get confused and start jabbering on about it's, how it's all her fault. And she doesn't seem to be sure of anything anymore. I don't know what she's talking about, but it sounds really scary like... Mm. Matthew! David! Like what? Matthew? Something terrible is going to happen. There it is, in black and white. Matthew Gore, 12-year-old composer of What Is X. Not a bad photo. Though I'd like to know how they got hold of it. I expect we'll arrive in Manchester to find hordes of groupies waiting to mob you. Dad! Look, I told you, I don't want to be a composer. What do you want to be? I'm going to be a physicist. Oh, are you now? So you can get your own back on poor old Mr. Kaffer. I want to find out what it means. What? Life. The universe. X, 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 X. Chucky says if I could just crack the X's. Dad. Hmm. This mum again to see. Sir William. He's a shrink, right? <laughs> Don't you go calling him that to his face. Sir William Thorpe is an eminent authority on the mysteries of the human mind. A psychiatrist. Well, that would be one way of... Now, look, here, Matthew, we've been through all that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with you. Quite the contrary. So why are you taking me to see a shrink? Stop it. Look. He's not going to do anything to you. He just wants to have a little chat. About Chucky? Precisely. I mean, we do want to find out as much as we can about her, don't we? Who she is, where she comes from. Chucky doesn't want me to talk about her anymore. She says I've said too much already. Well, no offence to Chucky, but I'm not sure she's the best judge of what's best for you. So, this, um, Chalky character is just a figment of your imagination? Yes, sir. Well, sort of. I suppose it's what you'd call a fantasy. Huh? I expect I was feeling a bit lonely, so I just sort of invented an imaginary friend. Hmm. That must be it. And this imaginary friend has been teaching you music and quantum physics? Uh, I wouldn't know about that, sir. Oh, that's what your dad says. I've got his letter right here. They worry, you see. <laughs> Parents, eh? <laughs> oh, you're a sly one, Matthew Gore, eh? 
I, I don't know what you mean, sir. Now, don't worry, son. I'm not going to hurt your friend, Chucky. We just want to find out what she's up to. What she wants from you. But I told you, she doesn't exist. Well, in that case, there's not much to talk about, eh? Well, however, your dad has left me in loco parentis, as we say, and he won't be back till five, so I suppose we'd better find something to pass the time. You like music? Oh, <laughs> stupid question. New millennial composer. Let's see. What have we got? Ah. You like this? Look, Matthew. This record's got patterns on it. See how they all run into the middle? A bit like water going down a plug hole. Yes, but not quite. If you look very carefully... It just runs into itself and it disappears to nowhere. Just keeps doing it. Just keep... Oh. It's all right, son. I'm here. No. Help. Danger. Danger. Not here. Not here too. Help. Talk. Don't talk. No. No. Matthew. Matthew. That's right, lad. Tell us about Chucky. No, no. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. She doesn't want. Ah. But it's not what she wants now, is it? No. The question is, what doesn't she want us to talk about? Well, how did it go? Fine. Gosh, is that the time? I thought I was only in there for about half an hour. What happened? Nothing much. He played me some records. Oh, so he runs a discotheque? Then he asked me some questions. Mr Gore, Sir William asked me to make his apologies for not seeing you now. He has an urgent consultation, but he will be writing to you shortly. Well, aren't you going to open it? Don't speak with your mouth full. Well, Matthew. It is addressed to you, from the Royal Swimming Society, no less. Go on, darling. What's that? A medal? I don't want it. What's wrong with it? Awarded to Matthew Gore for a valorous deed. Well, that's wonderful. It's not true. It's Chucky's. She saved me and Polly. It's not fair. Aren't you feeling well, darling? I'm all right. It's not anything to do with yesterday. Did that man do something that upset you? No. I'm all right. May I be excused? But you've hardly touched your... Mary, go on, man. Twinklehurst went off his food when his friend Star Eyes died. You go and brush that hair. It's disgusting. Yeah. You're looking a bit played out, old man. Why don't you go to bed? I'll bring you something up on a tree. No thanks, Dad. I don't want anything. Well, you ought to have something. More composing. Can I hear? What on earth is that? It's where Chucky lives. It's a horrible place, isn't it? That's why she thinks our world is so beautiful. Sounds pretty grim. I suppose it must be very hot there. In the daytime. Those fuzzy bits of vapour steaming off the lake. And those? Things that grow there. Chucky's world. Where is it? Never found out. Or where our world is either. It's the last recording. Is she gone, Matthew? He's gone forever. That is like losing a part. Well, thank 
Thank goodness for that. Maybe, but don't let him see you think that. I'd better take him up a tray. No, leave him alone. But the poor boy must eat. I think he's, well, saying goodbye to her and finding it painful. But David, you're talking as if... I mean, Chucky isn't real. To Matthew she is, and he's taking it hard. Do you think it's something that that Sir William man did? Well, he obviously hypnotised Matthew. Suppose he told him when he was in a trance that Chucky was going away. I mean, Matthew goes to see him in the very next day. I do think it's a bit high-handed. We go to him for a diagnosis, which we haven't got, and get given a treatment we, we haven't even asked for. But isn't it possible that a suggestion of that kind might have cured him? Cured him? Well, I mean... Really, darling, after the swimming and the music and all the other ways he's come on, you can still think that? I can still hope that. Excuse me. We're looking for Ellesmere Road. Um, turn right at the next junction, second on the left. Thank you. Uh, don't suppose you happen to know a house called Pointings, Mr Gore's house? That's my house, he's my dad. Oh, it looks like we're in luck. Hop in, we'll give you a lift. Gore, G-O-R-E. Matthew. No, you're quite sure? Yes, yes, of course, thank you. Hello, darling. Matthew's not come home. I'm ringing the hospitals. I called the school first. He left at the usual time. So then I tried the police. They promised to ring us if they had any news. I've done the hospitals. Oh, David, thank goodness you're back. I've been imagining all sorts of things. Look, drink this. It'll do you good. I thought everything would be all right once the chockey business was over. But he's closed up. He doesn't say anything. Not to me. And now, just to go off like this... David, you don't think... No, of course not. And you mustn't either. He's been keeping it all bottled look, up. Look, look, assuming your man Thorpe has somehow succeeded in driving Chalky out, <laughs> well, of course, it had come as a bit of a shock to Matthew. He'd got used to having her around, but, well, I can't see him doing anything silly. You really think so? You're not just saying that. But why wouldn't he call? He knows how we worry. Yes, that's what worries me. There. That didn't hurt a bit. The injections are to make your leg better. Where am I? You're in hospital, don't you remember? You were in an accident. Accident? Does my dad know? We told him you're doing fine. He'll come and see you as soon as he can. Now, tell me some more about Chalky. Yes. No. Of course. Thank you, Inspector. Well? What? Someone saw a boy of Matthew's description talking to a man in a big car. A Mercedes, he thinks. <gasps> Looked like they were arguing, apparently, and then Matthew got into the car. Oh, God! No, no. Mary, no, 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 you mustn't think that, no! <gasps> Mary, Mary, come on. <laughs> oh, God, oh, God. I don't know. I don't know, I tell you. It's all right. You don't know, but Chucky does. You said she wants to help us open the channel. I told you. She's gone away. She's gone. Gone. There, there. Don't cry, Matthew. I'm sure she can't have gone far. She'll be back. No, she says she's never coming back. Never. Never. Oh, there, there. Now, don't. It's all right. He never did any harm to. We just want him back. Whoever you are, if you have taken Matthew, if you're holding him, please, please don't hurt him. <laughs> get a note demanding an enormous ransom. We don't keep enormous ransoms around here. Or abducted by aliens. Maybe Chucky and their friends... Oh, for heaven's sake, Polly, just... 
When Twinklehoose was kidnapped, they tried to turn her into a pet pony. Shut up. Either shut up or go away. It's been almost a week. Nothing. Well, his picture's in all the papers. And it was on the news. And what with all the other publicity, well, let's just hope some good will come of it. You never think it'll happen to you. Try not to think about it. Hello? Uh, no, Janet, no. No news. Excuse me, sir. Can you tell me what city is this? I think I could manage that. Lived here all my life. You're in Birmingham, son. What's your trouble? Well, sir, I seem to be lost and haven't got any money to get home with. That's bad. And where would I be? Oswestry, Shropshire. And who might you be? Matthew. Matthew Gore. Are you now? Now, you just stand where you are, Matthew. Don't move an inch. As far as I can tell, the boy has come to no harm at all. He's not even frightened. It's certainly the most um, considerate kidnapping I've ever heard of. <laughs> However, there are certain anomalies. Matthew is convinced that he's been in a car accident and that his right leg was fractured. He says it was put in plaster and that the people at the hospital gave him a new treatment which made it mend quickly. Certainly his skin condition was consistent with the use of a plaster cast. Well, naturally we x-rayed and there's no sign of a break. What? Which brings us back to uh. these injections. The way Matthew describes it sounds like some sort of truth serum, presumably used in conjunction with hypnosis. But why anyone would want to use such sophisticated interrogation techniques on a 12-year-old child? I, uh... <sighs> mm. Well, if you know or suspect anyone who would have an interest in doing that, you'd be well advised to tell the police. No. That, that is, well, as you say, why would anyone? Well, the whole thing has the appearance of an elaborate hoax, deliberately contrived to be as unalarming to him as possible. Oh, well, if you should happen to come up with any other explanation... When Twinklehoose got kidnapped, they had to hire a horse box to bring him home. Kidnap? Was a kidnap done? It very much looks like it. But they were kind people. They made me better. I mean, it was all phony. My leg wasn't broken at all. The police surgeon x-rayed it. But I had plaster on and everything. Anyway, why would anybody want to? Did you have to pay a lot of money? No. No, nothing at all. And it can't have been kidnapping. Oh, you must be dead beat. Give me a kiss and then run along, both of you. Daddy and I will come up and see you when you're in bed. Well, what are we supposed to make of... <gasps> oh, Mary. Oh, but darling, it's all right now. It's all right <laughs> No. Complete mystery. Well, he seems to be none the worse for wear. <laughs> Thanks, Alan. Bye. Where's Mum? In bed, where you should be. What's the matter? It's chalky. Ah. I, I thought she'd gone away for good. She did. She's come back now. She wants me to tell you some things. Well, uh... Fine. Fire away. Matthew? Mm. Uh -huh. Sorry, Dad. Just a minute. Okay. I'll try. Chucky says it's better if she talks to you herself. Oh. Right home. Tell her I'm, uh, I'm all ears. <laughs> what do I do? No. Not the way she talks to me. I don't know why, but she says that only works with some people. She wants to try it another way. How do you mean? A bit like how we wrote the music. Come up to my room, I'll show you. I'm not sure this is such a good idea. Don't you think it might be better for you to tell me in your own words? I don't know. 
But Jockey's pretty sure she can work it, and she's usually right about things like this. I'm going to think of nothing. L -l -l Look here, Matthew. Are you sure you know what you're doing? This no. is Chucky speaking. I want to talk to Dad. Because it is the last time. Because I will not come back. Dad will be happy to hear this. Other part of parent. I mean, Mum. I mean, your wife will be happier. Because it is afraid of me. Thinks I am bad for Matthew. But no, no, I am here to help, help, understand. Dad? Who are you? Why are you here? I am explorer, I mean scout, I mean missionary, I mean teacher. I am here to teach. Oh, are you? Teach what? Matthew not have words, not understand. Not perhaps a very good teacher? Yes, I mean, no, failure. You take over his life, turn it upside down, and then you just walk away, leave him to sink, or... Swim? <sighs> yes, failure. Where do you come from? Not know. Far away. Far? How far? Not know. Many, many parsecs. Oh. And why did you come here? We are a very old people from a very old planet compared to yours. If we are to survive, we must colonize. Oh, so you're here to colonize us? I am here in mind only. It is difficult. A ship that can only travel at the speed of light takes a very long time to get anywhere. So a scout is sent. Because mind has no mass, it takes no time to travel. The scout makes his report. If conditions are favorable, we may send a ship of colonists. I see. So when can we expect a ship? <laughs> what? What's the joke? Your planet is very beautiful, but it is no use to us. It is too cold, too much water. Then why stay here? Why not go and find a more suitable planet? We are explorers. As far as we know, we are the only explorers in the universe. For a long time, we thought we were alone in the cold vastness of space. Intelligent life is so very rare. The rarest thing in creation, but the most precious. It is the only thing that gives meaning to the universe. Without it, nothing begins, nothing ends. Only a mindless babble of chaos. So all intelligent life has some sort of sacred duty to nurture other intelligent life forms? Yes. Nurture. Foster. Foster? Frustrated intelligence must have its bounds broken. Why does a cow stop? Narrow channeled. I am here to help. Open channels. So to you, we're all of us just children or how do you see the intelligent life on this planet narrow channeled yes no universe this that him her 
me you here there you you mean we're stuck in some sort of dualistic yes. stuck 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 in primitive dual it seems to us we've made quite a bit of progress <laughs> what what you consume more 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 power yet your resources remain finite this is not progress progress is an advance towards an objective what is your objective um you do not know so you squander your resources when they are spent you will be back where you were before you found them condemned to degenerate on wasted assets so what in your opinion should we be using them to do break out of the closed circle tap into a source of infinite power i see i think and what is this source of infinite power x x x x x and what is x Matthew has no word for it because x cannot be thought in words x is a concept he cannot grasp i'm afraid he's not the only one x is here in the music listen dad listen to my music Do not hear. You do not know how to listen. Look, Matt. Uh, Chucky. I'm sorry if you feel we've let you down. But after all, we are only human. Oh, I know we've made a right mess of things down here, but well, we're doing our best. Maybe we are like those cars you seem to find so funny. Maybe we do just get so far and then stop. The thing is, we don't know what you want from us. That's why we're afraid of you. I just don't think you understand what you're dealing with. An impressionable young mind, you could have driven him completely off the rails. I mean, why Matthew? Why out of all the eminent Ask be a young mind, open. Ask questions. What can travel faster than speed of light? Why a young mind? Old minds closed. Shut up. Narrow channel. When old minds hear voices, they think they are going mad. <laughs> you may have a point there, yes. But I still don't understand what you wanted with Matthew. I would have taught him physics, the basis of a common language. I would have told him about X, 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 and he would have begun to search for it. He would have become the most famous man in your world, greater than Newton, greater than Einstein. You know, Chucky, I don't think that would have suited Matthew. He hated taking the credit for saving Polly. He'd have hated all that unearned fame. So why have you decided to give up? I have failed here. I made mistakes. It is my first assignment. I was warned of the difficulties and dangers. I did not heed the warnings. The failure is my own fault. I I don't quite see how. A scout, a teacher must remain detached. She must not allow herself to get involved or identify with her host. Above all, she must be discreet. Ah, uh, your mistake was to care about Matthew. Help, help, Matthew, Holly. Which led you to interfere in the natural course of events. 
So when he fell in the mere... I should have let him drown. Well, thank God for your lack of discretion. I mean, it did arouse a certain amount of unwelcome attention, as we learned at, to our cost, but I still don't see... Yes, attention, danger. Sir William, look into my hypnote eyes. Matthew, look deep into my record. How pattern. Look, it all go down per hole. Click, click, click. Tape recorder, question, question. What is chalky? What is X, 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 X? No, danger, danger, help, help. Matthew. Matthew. I'm going to switch this thing off right now. No, leave it. For God's sake, talk. If you care about Matthew, why subject him to all this? First of all, you tell him you're going away forever. Then you're back, and then you're off again. Poor boy doesn't know whether he's coming or going. Chalky? Can you hear me? Chalky? What happened to Matthew? When Sir William hypnotized Matthew... He did not hypnotize me. I saw through Matthew's eyes, heard what he heard. Did Matthew tell him about... Everything. And I knew that having discovered my existence, Sir William would tell others. The others? There would be no end. That was when I knew I had failed. I knew I had to leave Matthew. And that I had to make the parting painful for him too. So he would think I had really gone for good. As I will go. Now. Soon. Go away. And that's why Matthew was kidnapped? Under the drugs and hypnosis, he could not lie. Everything I had ever told him went into their tape recorders. Their recordings included his pain at my leaving. His sadness convinced them it was true. But I don't understand. If, as you say, your purpose was to teach us how to tap the X's and whatnot, you had the whole thing on a plate. Whoever kidnapped Matthew wanted to know what you want to tell them. And yet, instead of seizing the opportunity, you withdraw. It doesn't make sense. You do not know your own world. There are vested interests. Oil, gas, coal, atomic, power, empires. How much would they be willing to pay to protect their interests? To stop a threat to their very existence? A million pounds? A hundred million? How much is a little boy's life worth? I tell you this because Matthew will be watched. They may have already bugged his room. It does not matter because this time I am going away for good. If you are wise, you will discourage him from taking up physics or any science. Do nothing to feed their suspicions. He is beginning to learn how to hear things, to make music. As a musician, he will be safe. You're going back to your own world? No. I have my work to do here. But this failure makes it much more difficult. They will be watching for me now. You think you can still do it in spite of that? I must do it. It is my duty as one intelligent life form to another. But now it will have to be done differently. An idea for one man, a flash of inspiration for another. More and more little pieces, innocuous in themselves, until one day it all comes together. The puzzle will be solved, the secret out, 
Matthew. Dad? You all right, old man? Yeah. Dad, you have to go now. Chucky wants to say goodbye. I thought she'd just... To me. She wants to say goodbye to me. Oh. All right. Goodbye, Chucky. Do anything. What do you mean, do anything? Well, it's Sunday. We could do something. When Twinkle Hoos got back from being kidnapped, they put on a special gym carna for him. <laughs> I bet he won all the events too. <laughs> well, of course he did. It was his party. No gym carnas and no other jamborees. Matthew and I are going to take a quiet stroll, aren't we? It's going to be a bit dull. She made me notice things more. Can't you go on noticing things? The world's quite an interesting place, you know. Lots to notice. Oh, I do. More than I did anyway. And it's a bit lonely, just noticing it by yourself. But yeah, and she taught me how to hear. Perhaps if you could get it down in music, you'd be able to share it with other people. Yeah. It won't be the same. It'll be something. Matthew, I, I want you to have this. Dad, I no, said I didn't... No, take it. Go on. Read it. Awarded to Chalky for a valorous deed. You changed the inscription. Well, fair's fair. What do you think? It's all right. No, it is. Thanks, Dad. Now that they know about her, she says it'll have to be done differently. A hint here, a hint there. Little pieces of the puzzle, until one day it all comes together. Hmm. May take a long time. She says it may not happen in my lifetime, but it will happen. It will come, Dad. It will. In Chockey, David Gore was played by Owen Teal. Mary Gore was Kathy Tyson. Matthew Gore was Sasha Dewan. And Polly was Holly Granger. Chockey was played by Catherine Hunt. Sir William Thorpe by John Branwell. And Alan was John Lloyd Fillingham. Roy Landis was played by William Oxborough. Denise Clutterbuck by Melissa Sundon. And Colin was William Haig. The Newsday presenter was Stephen Perry. All other parts were played by members of the cast. The music was composed and played by Paul Cargill, with technical presentation by Steve Brook. Chockey was produced in Manchester by Melanie Harris, with special thanks to Nandita Ghosh. And you may be interested to know that Chockey is now available on cassette. Coming up in a couple of minutes after the news, the smell of public toilets in Tudor England, the taste of tobacco 300 years ago, and the charred, smouldering ruins of a royal palace. That's history in a couple of minutes. BBC News at four o'clock.
The Foreign Secretary, Robin Cook, says deadlock has been avoided at the EU talks in Edinburgh. Discussions about enlargement of the Union have been hampered by a disagreement between France and Greece over the terms for Cyprus to join. But Mr Cook said he was confident that good progress was now being made and he expected agreement to be reached.